Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. It's Friday, April the 26th, 2019. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, first, let me just say, I was surprised when I heard that Abel Sanchez and Gennady Golovkin were splitting up, couldn't work things out. I considered that pairing to be inspired. But let me just say two things that I believe many of you already know, right? You know, if you are in business, whatever your business is, long enough, where you have your own clients, there's going to be a time when you get fired, rightly or wrongly, right? If you have your own clients, if you're in a position of responsibility, you could be creative, you could be effective, you could be successful. Sometimes the personalities just get to be where they are. People's expectations get out of line, right? They change, they adjust. Uh, people just have different preferences. So the Cleveland Browns at one point fired Bill Belichick. So the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at one point fired Tony Dungy. The Laker Pat Riley divorce was a bit messy. I think Riley won coach of the year as he was being shown the door. Right? So let me just say this. Obviously, Golovkin has made a decision to go in a different direction. And, um, you know, I'll just say that I believe boxing trainers know. What Belichick, Dungy, Pat Riley know, right? You're hired really to get fired. Sometimes in a business where personalities are involved, where there's a lot of stress, where the outcomes at times rest in the hands of the judges, there are going to be disagreements, right? Um, Abel Sanchez is not the first excellent trainer. I've heard of who's being replaced. Let me also point out a second truth that I think I know, especially since I handle divorces. Outsiders really don't know. They just simply don't know what's actually going on in a relationship involving their friends. Right? They, they just don't know. None of us know what the dynamic really was between Abel Sanchez and Golovkin. Right? We don't know how long there was tension. If there was tension, what was said, what was promised, you just don't know. Let me go one step further. Sometimes the people themselves don't know. I've had cases where, you know, I'm talking with a client and I say, hey, well, tell me why you want this divorce. And the guy will look at me with a blank stare. Right? Glovkin, Sanchez, who knows what's really happening there? Who knows if they fully understand it? According to reports, Sanchez was a bit bewildered that there was a request for a different financial arrangement. What I think is important for us as fight fans is just not to take sides, just not to assume that we know what we don't know, right? Just know that Sanchez is one of the best trainers I've come across. Understand Golovkin's not the first superstar fighter Sanchez has had. You can go back to Terry Norris and other guys. Sanchez has a long history, a long history of improving fighters' games. I was watching uh, Joe Joyce against Bermain Stiver. I was on the wrong side of that one. Suddenly, Joyce showed up with boxing skills. And I thought, gee, what, 
What's going on? Then I understood, oh, Joyce is with Sanchez, who, by the way, Joyce then moved on from, right? But the minute the announcers talked about Sanchez being in Joyce's corner, I understood. Joyce was a different fighter, a much better fighter. Sanchez is excellent. And I believe long time viewers here know that I still consider to this day Golovkin to be the middleweight champion. Golovkin to be, quite frankly, unbeaten. So let's not take sides. Let's just recognize that this is a reality of sports. A lot of excellent trainers get fired. Uh, talented boxers move on. Um, it is what it is. Let's talk about Keith Thurman against Manny Pacquiao. Now, I understand this fight's being discussed. It's supposed to be a pay-per-view fight. When this fight is formally announced, I'm going to be hustling to try to get a bet down on Manny Pacquiao. I don't believe the fight is close. Keith Thurman's had a glorious career. It's, it's glorious, folks. It's glorious, and it's ongoing. He's still unbeaten as I make this video. Right? In terms of the fighters of his generation, and Thurman's around 30, right? He beat Sean Porter. He beat Danny Garcia when both were unbeaten. But as I've said, he's 30 now. And he has a right elbow problem that required that he have surgery. In my opinion, he has not been the same since. He's had one fight, one, in the last two years. And in that fight against Jose Cito Lopez, he got hurt. Lopez is cuffing him around in one of the rounds. He had to survive that round and was one punch away, and I mean one punch away, from being stopped. Now, that fight went the distance, but let's just say that he had so much trouble with Lopez that one judge scored that fight 113-113, right? So, I understand he's much younger than Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao, to me, is an outlier. Pacquiao's a freak athlete. Pacquiao, at 40, has faster hands than Keith Thurman does at 30, right? I believe a fighter like Thurman, who, as I've said, has had a great career, has beaten some big names, earned his championship, had to dig deep against Sean Porter in a very close fight. I believe Thurman's at the point in his career where if he gets embarrassed in the ring, think James DeGale, against Chris Eubank in the Gale's last fight. If Thurman gets embarrassed in the ring, and what do I mean by embarrassed? Knocked down multiple times. Or, worse yet, knocked out. Then I believe Thurman walks away from the sport. He's won big matches. He's gotten married recently. Um, he himself has to know that with this elbow problem, I should say with this surgically repaired elbow now, he's not the guy he used to be. Right? I believe his time away from the game, again, one fight in two years. And his injury, right? To me, elbows are like backs. Someone says, oh, I have a bad back. Folks, it never fully heals. Right? Maybe there are times when the back's not balky, but then there are those times where the back is balky, and you don't know which time is which. You're telling me in a grueling sport like boxing, Keith Thurman is going to have full confidence in that right elbow? I'm not buying it. So, let's talk about Manny Pacquiao. 
right? Pacquiao to me has bounced back nicely from his loss to Jeff Horn. And that was a very close fight, right? Pacquiao had a convincing stoppage of Lucas Matisse. After that fight, they asked Matisse what the problem was. Matisse was blunt. He said the problem was Manny Pacquiao. Right? The speed was there. Everything worked. It was a dominant performance. Pacquiao even reconciled with the superstar trainer he left, Freddie Roach. He fought Adrian Broner. I thought he spanked Adrian Broner. Right? Now, Broner, understand, to this day as I make this video, has never been knocked out. He's been knocked down. Remember Marcus Maidana, who, by the way, himself tried to come back, had some grueling workouts, and then realized that he preferred his civilian life. He didn't want to go back to a life in the ring. Right? Understand, this is the kind of comeback Keith Thurman is trying. I know they're telling you, oh, he was the champion throughout the period where he had surgery and stuff like that. Folks, he's been out of the ring. Didn't look good when he got back in the ring. Right? Pacquiao just dominated Adrian Broder. Dominated him. Fight before that, he stops Lucas Matisse. Pacquiao still has pop, still has power, still has hand speed. Is a very tough matchup for anyone when that person has been in the sport continuously and has the timing that comes with fighting on a regular basis. Let's be blunt here. Pacquiao's too fast for Thurman. Right? Pacquiao is clearly much faster in terms of hand speed and foot speed than Jose Cito Lopez, who hung tough with Keith Thurman. Hung tough with him. Let's face it, too. Pacquiao just hits too hard when Pacquiao has a guy who can't keep up with him speed wise. And when Pacquiao has that guy reaching, you end up with situations like the Chris Algieri situation and the Lucas Matisse situation, where guys just start dropping multiple times. Let's face it, too. Thurman fought Sean Porter, who of the elite fighters is probably the most like Pacquiao. Right? Sean Porter is sudden. Right? Just like Manny Pacquiao. Well, understand, the Thurman who fought Porter was prime Keith Thurman. This is before Thurman has to take time off. Right? That's a Thurman who was fighting on a regular basis against world-class competition. Revisit that fight. Folks, it's razor close. Porter has Thurman with his back up against the ropes at times. The suddenness threw Thurman off. And that was prime Thurman against this version of Thurman. I think Manny Pacquiao, who's going to be aggressive from a southpaw stance, is going to really throw Thurman off. Only this time, Thurman's going to be rusty, and he's going to be dealing with a surgically repaired elbow. So I've seen this pattern before. The older fighter who wants to just push it to the limit for the final stretch of their career. Right? They say, hey, I've had a great career. Now for this home stretch. I'm 30. I want to take on these big names. I'm fighting for legacy now. I already have earned belts. Right? These young guys, or in this case, this older guy, has nothing on me. I'm going to go out with the blaze of glory. Isn't that what James DeGale said? Just like 
Keith Thurman. Didn't the Gale look a bit uninspired against Caleb Truax? Aren't there a series of fights there where the Gale didn't quite look like James the Gale? Wasn't it the same thing, too, where you heard that the Gale had surgery on a shoulder and that now he was as good as new and stuff like that? Folks, boxing's a young man's game for a reason. Outside of the heavyweight division, where people age more slowly, right? Just understand, most of the time, guys are out of the sport by the time they're 35. They're certainly off the main stage. Now, you have a guy with an elbow problem. And keep in mind, when you're throwing punches... A hitter like Thurman wants to snap that elbow, right? There's a mental and a physical part to it. Give me one second. Middle of a workday. Well, I'll just say this. Against Manny Pacquiao, you just have to know that your best right hand is there. Because Pacquiao doesn't give you a lot of time to think. It's a fast-paced, episodic fight. Now, if Thurman tries to throw that right hand, and physically it's hurting him, it's not 100%. Right? It feels like it's been surgically repaired. Then this fight is over. Right, this fight's over. He wouldn't be physically ready for Manny Pacquiao. But there's a mental side too. Let's say Thurman wants to throw the hand. And it works a few times, but he still has lingering doubts. Isn't that the way these injuries that keep you inactive for as long as Keith Thurman's been inactive? Isn't that the way those injuries work? Let's also get real, too. Manny Pacquiao is always prepared for fights. Pacquiao at 40 has to realize that he doesn't have the luxury of losing. If he wants to stay in the mix to fight Crawford or Spence, right? Manny Pacquiao understands he can't have any mercy for Keith Thurman. So put me among those. I haven't even seen the odds yet. Put me among those who believes that Manny Pacquiao is going to beat Keith Thurman. I believe there's going to be a lot of people out there who don't keep track of injuries, who just know that Thurman's an unbeaten champion who was tremendous a couple years ago. Folks, a couple years ago is an eternity in boxing. Right In the last two years, he's beaten Jose Cito Lopez. If I asked you to name the five top fighters at welterweight, I don't think Lopez's name gets mentioned. Again, one judge had that 113-113. I'm telling you, there's a round there where Thurman, his timing's off. You could tell from his head. Thurman gets hit in the head a couple of times and his head is snapping back. Understand, guys who have timing, who understand the rhythm of a fight, will have their neck muscles stiff and they'll anticipate the shots coming. To sum this up in one sentence, Thurman's too rusty to fight Manny Pacquiao right now. Simply too rusty. But he's out of options. Because he's had only one fight in two years. He'll lose his place in the pecking order if he doesn't try to at least keep up with Crawford and Spence and Pacquiao and Porter and Garcia, who looked great the other day against Adrian Granados. So I like Manny here. Right? As I've said before, freak athletes don't come around that often. Right? Pacquiao, because of the styles, has a chance to run the table at 147. 
right? I'm still not convinced that Crawford will be able to handle Pacquiao's speed. I'd be shocked if Errol Spence is able to keep Manny Pacquiao, who has tremendous upper body movement at the end of a jab like he kept Mikey Garcia. Right? Pacquiao just happens to find himself in an era where there are elite fighters around him, but his style meshes well. Right? And he's lucked into a fight against an aging guy, a guy who's an old 30, who is right-handed and is coming off major elbow surgery. I think Manny Pacquiao takes this. I'm expecting the fight to be misprized because Thurman is the unbeaten champion. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.